we did need to have different looks between the Vikings and the Saxons and we went for the Vikings being bearded and a bit sexier with bigger hair. Being as the Saxons are very pious in this, we went for a tight, minimalist, unadorned look. So the men would have badly cut, slightly cropped hair, still dirty and, and things like that, and the beards would be short. And the women had very plain, unadorned, simple, not necessarily attractive styles. In fact, the Queen has a particularly harsh style, which is two plaits tied under the chin. We were encouraged to, wherever possible, use the actor's own hair with extensions in the back. And if we were making beards and moustaches, we individually put hairs on their faces, which is great for the actor. It gives them great flexibility and movement. It's just time consuming and technically more difficult. But the end result, I, I hope, has been worth it. It is a fact that the Vikings did. Sometimes when they were going into battle, they would file their teeth and then they would rub red berries in. So your teeth would be stained red with these kind of markings in and grooves in. And again, it, it was another way of reinforcing the difference between the two tribes. We also had a lot of blood, dirt, scars. If I can show you my scar box over here. Fresh scars, old texture scars, boils, cut scars, pustules, swellings. We had a lot of fun with lots of things like that. The Saxons have a terrible, terrible time on, on costumes and makeup. I have boils and red marks put all over me. This is the mould and it's made of a sort of silicon and these indentations are what it's poured into and then it's set. So essentially that mould stays the same every time. The sets are so great and the costumes and the whole thing's very immersive which is really, really helpful because it kind of it does half the, half the work for you that you're Everyone looks like they're kind of part of this very, very different world and it's, uh, yeah, it's very, very useful, very useful indeed.